Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads, and I have a lot to say. Black History Month is well underway. I finished a bunch, bailed on a few, and started a swack. So let's get started. I finished three books this week. The first one was the first book that I tackled for Black History Month, and that was the Martinican novel Slave Old Man by Patrick Chamozo translated from the French by Linda Coverdale. This was a buddy read with Justin of Ghost Reader, and I am sad to say that we didn't like it. The first half was quite mesmerizing, but as I said in my last Friday reads when I just read about 20 pages, I think, the, it was really overwritten from the get-go. Adverbs and adjectives, just an annoying number and completely, utterly off-putting number of adverbs <laughs> adjectives that just made it bad writing, despite other per aspects of the writing being absolutely stunning. So it's the story of an old man who's a slave on a plantation in Martinique, whenever, whatever century, and it's kind of meant to be an archetypal tale, which uh, was a big part of the problem for me, because we he didn't have any story, he didn't have any history, he didn't have any biography, he was just an archetype. But he uh, escapes, and the master sends out his mastiff, his, his uh, attack dog, to find him and maim him so that he can't escape. This dog had been used for that purpose for, for several years. And the first half of the book, it's about a hundred and, it's a, a short novella, the first half is about the escape and about the life on the plantation and it was so engaging and powerfully told except for the horrible overwritten writedness, overwrittenness of it. And then the second half was just, it's it became some kind of a shamanic meditation on slave history or black history in Martinique or negritudedness and nothing happened in the second half it was just it was so deeply unsatisfying Chamozo is one of the is a in addition to being a novelist he's a literary theorist well that should have put me off because it it's like first he had a theory and then he wrote a quote-unquote work of fiction to demonstrate the theory, and that really shows in the second half. I was bitterly disappointed. Two stars. I might go back and, well, two things. I might reread it because I can't stop thinking about it. And I might, upon, if I'm still not able to stop thinking about it in a few months, I might up it to at least three stars just because it stuck with me. But it was very unsatisfying, so I find myself just like rah, 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 grinding my teeth and going, you know, did I miss something? Uh, I, apparently, because uh, it was a big disappointment. Not the best way to start my Black History uh, TBR. In much happier news, while well, this is not happy because I didn't want to ever finish this book, I finished The Quest for Queen Mary by James Pope Hennessy. What an absolute delight. Five stars, 17 stars. I'll be doing a full review. I absolutely loved it. This was a buddy read with Leah from Calgary, and we didn't, uh, neither of us wanted it to ever, ever end. Mary. And yesterday I finished the Madeleine Tien collection of short stories, Simple Recipes. This was a four star read. I would say the majority of the stories were four stars. There was the last, the longest story was a two and a half or a three star, and there was at least one five star. So without actually getting out my calculator, that averages out to four stars. And, you know, she's such a great writer. So I enjoyed the writing. Almost every story was missing some vital something or other that I don't think, I haven't read all of her backlist, but just to appreciate what she broke through in her own writing to achieve such a masterpiece as Do Not Say We Have Nothing. Um, and I even, you know, so appreciating that, reading her, her evolution as a writer, but also there was breathtaking sentences and evocative descriptions and, you know, a few of the stories were, were uh, 
really, really awesome. So I enjoyed it as a whole. I did. So that's what I have finished this week. And I have, I've bailed on two, both uh, that were on my Black History Month TBR. The first one was a novel, Plum Bun, by Jesse Redman Fawcett. A 1928 novel, so right at the height of the Harlem Renaissance, and it was awful. I got to what page did I get to? Two or a page and a half, and that was way too much, as I said in my review. The prose was just oh, so pedantic, so overly Latinate. It just made me want to barf. And this is the mildest way I can put it. It kind of resonated with. What I'm not particularly enjoying about County Cullen's poetry, but I don't know enough about poetry to make such a comparison. But it, I know prose, damn it, fictional prose, and it just sucked so badly. I won't embarrass her descendants by giving you an excerpt, but I got to uh, the second page and I uh, bailed. And uh, sadly, I also bailed on about page four on this short story collection, Insurrections by Rion Amalcar Scott. This came to my awareness again when I did the Massaging My TBR video a couple weeks ago, so I ordered it, realizing that it was historical short fiction about an African-American town, a fictional African-American town, that it would fit right into my Black History reading plans, and I didn't actually have a short story collection included, so I ordered it, I received it two days ago, I started it last night and read four or five pages, and I didn't like the writing at all. A couple things. Um, I hate stories or novels that start immediately with an emotionally traumatic or some kind of a traumatic event before I get to know characters. I kind of feel like at least buy me dinner first before you have any expectations about sex. Like, uh, And this started with a suicide attempt. And the upstairs neighbor hangs himself off the balcony and the, down, the neighbor on below, they rescue him. And that was just way too intense too quickly. But then it was just a therapy speak of the dialogue. And it was too much dialogue and too much therapy. Self-actualizing Oprah Winfrey dialogue. And I hate that. So I, I couldn't continue. So I bailed. But this is a, the kind of short stories that would appeal to a lot of normal readers out there. So uh, I'm not a normal reader. And I didn't like it at all. So those were my bails. And good lord, how many have I started? I've started eight books. So the first one is the collected poems of County Cullen, and I'm not really enjoying them. I don't know if I'm going to end up bailing. I'm reading a few each day, but I can't get into rhymed poetry. All I experience are the rhymes, and I think rhymes are so juvenile. I don't know anything about poetry, and lots of people love old poetry, but I don't like I mean, I, I enjoy the rhymes, but then I'm just kind of sing-songing, and I'm not getting into it, so they're, they're completely distracting me from whatever it is he's trying to say, so I'm not enjoying them. Uh, much more successful, I have started on audio a South African novel, Mother to Mother by Sindiwi Bagona. This is part of Karen of Runright Reed's book club. And it's her selection for one of her selections for Feb for February. She's quite ambitious. She's a taskmaster for uh, a book club. She got two a month. Good for her. She's fabulous. I had never heard of Cindy B. Magona, and I am always, you know, I've done quite a f bit of delving into South African literature. I'm pr quite deeply interested in it. I don't think I've ever heard of her. And she's a 65-year-old woman. It's not like she's this new woman, this new writer that that has just come on the scene. Oh no, she's 75, not 65, she's 75. And Mother to Mother was published in 1998. But she, her first novel came out in 1990, and her most recent novel is from 2014. I don't know if they're all novels, but her most recent work. I am really enjoying it on audio. It's really well narrated. The modern historical event that is the center of the novel in a way is the murder which i don't think i ever heard about i again i thought i was really up on ap apartheid history but i didn't particularly remember about the murder of the white american university student stanford graduate amy beale she was an anti-apartheid activist in south africa and was murdered in cape town by a black mob uh, shouting anti-white slurs as they murdered her and so this novel is in the form, it's kind of almost like a second person novel, where the murderer's mother, the black South African young man's mother, is 
addressing her narrative to the mother of Amy Beale. And so far, just telling her, the mother's, the black South African mother's story and the story of her mother and the story of her, she's a single mom and how she was trying to raise her children. And it's actually outside of Cape Town, the setting, Gugilatu, which is a township 15 kilometers from Cape Town. And it is where the Nazi apartheid regime deported thousands and hundreds of thousands, I don't know, thousands and thousands of black residents from one area of Cape Town and out into the boonies in this godforsaken place and they had to fend for themselves and make their own little township and crimes against humanity's nature of what that does to a community is really described well here. I have quite a sensitive allergy towards too much politics, too much social political stuff in my fiction, and that those alarm bells aren't so far are not going off at all. It's just really well told as a, a fictional narrative with a whole bunch of uh, well told social political details. So I'm about uh, a quarter of the way through it, maybe 20%, and really, really enjoying it. It's powerful. Uh, a bunch of us have started the buddy read of Jonas Gordvine, which is Zora Neale Hurston's first novel. So published, I'm not sure, I'm not going to look it up, but really, really enjoying it. Zora Neale Hurston, right out of the gate, she was awesome. I'm about half done it, so I will hope to finish it up this weekend. I'm not going to say too much about it, just because I have so many books to talk about. It's just lush and whimsical and angry and passionate and literarily stunning especially when you consider it's her debut so everybody so far in the buddy read seems to be enjoying it it's with doris of all the books justin of ghost reader chris of chris wolak her channel is not yet active but you certainly can check her out on her, the wonderful bookish podcast that she co-hosts the book cougars and Karen of Run Right Reads. So yeah, it's a fabulous uh, buddy reading group. I am two chapters into this work of African history, Almost Home, Maroons Between Slavery and Freedom in Jamaica, Nova Scotia, and Sierra Leone by Ruma Chopra. It's really quite well written, accessible. It's written by an academic historian, but it's quite accessible, readable prose, and the story is just fascinating. Oh my God, I didn't know anything about this. Maroon settlements and the way the British colonial rulers of Jamaica allowed them to have their settlements in return for them capturing escaped slaves and all of the racial tensions and black-white tensions and uh, compromises and then tensions between slaves and the Maroons. I've just read the introduction and the first chapter about war because the peace treaty with the Maroons was made in about 1740 and then war break broke out between the Maroons and the colonial rulers um, in 1795 and so just covering that first stage and then after that they eventually uh, one of the Maroon settlements gets deported to Nova Scotia and then ultimately to Sierra Leone and what an incredible story. I'm buddy reading this with Karen of Run Right Reads and I won't say much more than that for now but wow important history that I didn't know diddly squat about. After I bailed on the Jesse Redmond Fawcett Plum Bun novel I wanted to fill that gap with another African-American female writer and Chris of Book Cougars had invited me to do a buddy read with her of another such novel that I'd never heard of and I had had to say to her about a month ago, sorry my TBR is just so massive already, but I said, if I bail on something, I'm in. Well, I bailed on something, so I'm in. And that is a novel called The Street by Anne Petrie. And, her, and this is her debut novel from 1946. And I think this could probably going to be my top read of the month. It is so good. Who the hell is Anne Petrie? Did you know about her? I had never heard of the novel, or obviously of her, and this is her debut. She died in 1997, aged 88. She was born and died in the same town in Connecticut, Old Saybrook. Wow. This novel, The Street, was the first novel by an African-American woman to sell more than a million copies. Wikipedia tells me, but I'd never heard of it, have you? The prose, the writing is just gorgeous, and all the different tones that she takes and the way that she so vividly describes. The scene opens with a 
A single mother who, after work, is walking to check out a room to rent in some boarding house, not boarding house, in some uh, rooms for let place, and the description of her walking through the wind and then going into this dark, run-down house and the, the uh, lascivious landlord who takes her upstairs and she looks at the room and all the things she's imagining, it's just stunningly done! I love it so far! Apparently her other notable work, again, just according to Wikipedia, is The Narrows from 1953. Well, sign me up for that one. See what bailing at the drop of a hat can do for you? Or see what it does for me? I have also started Wallace Thurman's Harlem Renaissance novel, The Blacker the Berry, and I am loving this one too. Yeah, all in all, I'm having a fabulous reading week. This was originally published in 1929, and Wallace Thurman was one of the central personalities at the heart of the Harlem Renaissance, and he shows up a lot in the, autobi in the biography of Zora Neale Hurston, and he died of alcoholism at about the age of 31, just a couple years after this was published, and he was in a heterosexual marriage, but also very, very gay, and so I want to re find out a lot mo more about his life, but this novel, which is about skin color prejudice within the African American community, is so well told, I am about just 25 pages in, but really... Just an elegantly structured and written story about a dark-skinned young African-American woman whose color-conscious parents, her mother is much more light-skinned and her stepfather is really prejudiced against the daughter because her skin is so black. And so they send her from, I think they're in Idaho? Uh, yeah. They send her to university in uh, Los Angeles, and I'm just at that part of the story, but really well done. And uh, because I bailed on the these short stories, I wanted I definitely wanted to get some short stories in, so I did a bunch of browsing around on Scribd and to see what else I had on my shelves or on in my Kindle. Uh, then I remembered that I acquired all of Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's works on Apple Books a couple years ago. I think I got the whole set for $15 or something. And so one of her books is a, a collection of short stories, The Thing Around Your Neck. I was planning to read her works in sequence, so I started with Purple Hibiscus, and then there's one other novel, Yellow Cranberries or something, next. And then this one, The Thing Around Your Neck, but I want to read short stories for Black History Month, so, and I started the first one, for first story this morning, and it's really starting out awesome. So, that was a great last minute addition to the reading schedule. And lastly, this one is uh, for Britta's Nobel Women Reading Club, The Good Earth by Pearl Buck, and I just read 20 pages the other day. Oh my god, it's just amazing. I've never read any Pearl Buck. It is just such lively suck you right in writing the story. It's about a poor Chinese guy. I'm, I'm not, not clear exactly if, whether it's Hong Kong or China or where, where he is, but uh, who gets married to an ex-slave that he hasn't even seen, and it's him preparing for his wedding day, and it's just told with such vivid, alluring detail. I just love her writing. So those, <laughs> that's what I started this week. Ah. And in terms of what I coming up next, I'm not sure exactly, but I do know that this weekend I will be starting this. In fact, I may read the whole thing this weekend. Kazuo Ishiguro's story, Come Rain or Come Shine. This is part of the Faber Stories series that's been launched this year to celebrate their 90th anniversary. Doris of Aldi Books and I are going to do an occasional series where we discuss some of these stories, and this will be the first one that we'll do. So for that reason, I'm going to at least start reading this story by Kazuo Ishiguro. And I think I will at least easily finish this one, plus I will also finish the uh, Zora Neale Hurston novel. So probably I will, I, I expect I will definitely get started on this in the coming week. Gene Toomer's collection, Kane, and Kane is considered one of the most uh, significant works of the Harlem Renaissance, and the back calls it a novel. I don't know. It's a collection of short stories, poems, and play dialogues that perhaps tells an entire uh, novelistic story. I have no idea, but it's considered to be quite a modernist work of literature, and all of that sounds pretty darn good to me. 
So I'm going to get started on that. And I may start other stuff in the coming week, but I'm not sure. I think I've probably got enough to keep me keep me going, but we'll see. Hey? So that is what's going on. My reading life is beautiful. How is yours? Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.